Okay, let's take a look at making a VEX part in Fusion 360. Uh, specifically something that we could enter in the Autodesk Make It Real Online Challenge offered through the REC Foundation. To start off, I've got my drawing area here, but I need to do a sketch. So I'm going to come up here and click on Create Sketch. That's going to bring up some planes that I can work on. I'm going to pick my XY plane here at the bottom to start. And now I've got some space that I can draw on. For this project, I'm going to draw a cam that would fit into the VEX High Strength Gear Kit. So for a cam, it has, normally consists of two circles attached with some tangents. So I'm going to go Create, Circle, Circle Diameter. I'm going to go to my origin point, And let's say I'm going to make this 30 millimeters, about three centimeters. Now for some reason it went to one, but we can fix that. 30, enter. Okay, and then my second circle, again, circle. Now I see how there's a C here. I could just type the letter C and it'll start a circle as well, but we'll just get used to using the menus here make my next circle and let's make this half the size so 15 so now I've got my two circles the foundation of my cam now let's connect those circles together with some tangents so I'm going to use my line tool this time and you see I have an L there so I could just hit L on the keyboard for a shortcut and I'm going to draw some lines I hit L start my line command again now notice the lines are nowhere near the circles that's because I want to make sure that they are constrained perfectly. To do that, I want to apply proper constraints to them. If I look here under my sketch palette, I've got a couple options. The one that I'm going to use is tangent. So I want this line to be tangent to this circle. And I want this line to be tangent to that circle. And you can see the line now just comes across and touches the edge of the circle. It doesn't cross it. If I was just to draw this line, there's a high probability that it I would make them cross. So I'll click with that, and there, and that line to that line. So now I've got my two lines all tangent. I can start cleaning this up a little bit. Under Sketch again, I've got some other tools down here. Fillet, Trim, Extend. We're going to use Trim, and you can see it's got a shortcut because it's a popular command. So we could just hit the letter T. So we're going to trim out the lines that we don't want. And now you can see I've got the shape of my cam. Move this back down. This sketch is finished now. I, I could add some more dimensions, but we can come back and play with that later. So I'm going to go stop sketch. And you can see my sketch in 2D space. Still not a 3D object. So the next step is to make this into a 3D object. If I go to create, up top there's another one called extrude, which is the E shortcut. I click on this, and now I can extrude and make it into a thickness. Um, the cam that I want to do is about 10, sorry, 10 millimeters wide. Um, because the nature of the VEX high strength gear stuff though, if we take a look, we are about 10, 10 mils wide, but also we're a mirror image on both sides. So the easier way to do this is to draw just half of it and then mirror it over later. So if I come here, you can see that I finished my extrude. We'll just go back there. So instead of going 10, I'm just going to go 5 so I can mirror it at a later time. In my extrude dialog box here, I've got five mils, one way, new body, distance. So all my stuff there is set. Click OK, and I end up with my half cam. So now we can add some more of the features onto this. So I'm going to start a new sketch on that top surface. And I'm going to draw in this quarter inch square axle hole that VEX uses. I'm going to go to my rectangle, two point rectangle and draw a rectangle in where the axle hole needs to be. 
Now, if you remember at the beginning, I started this larger circle at the origin point right there. So the origin point is the center of the circle. I can use that to my advantage with some constraints. I've got this horizontal vertical constraint down here. And what I can do is take that and I can say I want the center point of this line to be vertical to the center of the origin. And I want the center point of this line to be horizontal with the origin. So now the square is lining up around that origin point. Now I can add some dimensions and get it perfect. So under sketch, way down at the bottom, probably off the screen, there's a command called sketch dimensions. And the shortcut for this is D. You can just hit D on the keyboard. Click on a line, come up, and by default we're 12 mil. Well, I want this to be a quarter of an inch. So we can type imperial measurements into Fusion, and it will just change them automatically for us. So 0.25 inch, and it automatically changed it to 6.35. We want the same dimension on this line. I don't have to type it in again though. I can just click on the last dimension, and that'll change everything for me. So you can see, there's my square. Now in the same sketch, I might as well get some more geometry created. If I take a look at my high strength gear, you can see that VEX is really good about putting extra holes on things so we can bolt stuff down. So we should probably look at doing the same thing for our cam. So we'll go sketch, circle, remember we could just hit C, and we'll make two circles. Not too concerned about the size quite yet. I'm going to use my horizontal vertical constraint again just to make sure that the centers are all on the same line. Oh, I've got one error there, but let's see if I can make these go. Mm. I'll try one more time. This should be horizontal to this. One error. Okay, so there seems to be a bit of a problem with how the circle's constraining. So let's delete that circle, and I'll just draw another one. So circle. This time I'm going to start at my first circle. Bring my mouse out, and you'll see that I get a slashed line. And there's my new circle. Now the horizontal sh constraint should work this time. There we go. Now the two points are horizontal. Sometimes you just have to change what you're doing. So I've got my two circles. If you can see, they're different sizes right now. I could use the equal constraint, make the two circles equal to each other, but they're still not going to be the right size for the VEX stuff. So I can take a look back at my high strength gear here, and I can get some dimensions from it. So I've got one of the circles here. If I go inspect and measure, I can click on that circle, and it's going to give me some information. And the one that I'm specifically looking for is the diameter, and it's 4.445 millimeters. We can get away with saying that it's just 4.5 millimeters. Back here, so I can add another dimension. I'm just going to hit D on the keyboard this time. And this should be 4.5. And you can see both automatically updated. The other thing that's a bit of an issue here is our spacing is not exactly correct because the VEX material uses very specific spacing. So if I take a look at this piece of C channel, I can do the same thing. So another, another stock VEX part. And you could do this with a ruler with a physical piece of material instead of doing it online like I'm doing. But inspect and measure. And I want to take a look from center point to center point. And the distance it's telling me is 12.7. So I go back to my cam here and go D again. From here to here. Let's try that again. D from here to here should be 12.7. And from here the center point 
should also be 12.7. So you see that I just copied that dimension over. So now I've got some geometry there that I can work with. We'll go stop sketch and I'm going to extrude this geometry. So extrude, pick what I want and you can see I could extrude it up, extrude it down. We want to go extrude down and cut out the material. Now I've got it so it's cutting through everything right now for a distance of 11. We want to be a little better with this so instead of just going through everything we're going to go and set the distance to 2 and click on the other side. That way no matter how much we change this cam it's always going to go all the way through. So now we've got the holes like the VEX material would have but again if we take a look at the high strength gear you can see that they've actually pocketed out the inside of the gear to reduce the material and the weight. We should probably do the same with our cam. So here's our cam again. I'm going to create another sketch. And this time we're going to use a command called offset. So we can take the lines that we've already have and offset them in. So I want to offset this in. Now by default it went away from the material. I want to go in. So I'm going to go negative 2 for negative 2 millimeters and that puts that nice line on the inside. I also need to offset the other lines that I did. So I want to offset this and again we'll make it negative 2. I want to offset this one. We'll make it. Now this time I went to the outside so I can just say 2 and we'll offset this one as well. Make sure I hit O first. Set the distance to 2. So there's my geometry there. Stop sketch and I can extrude again. And again, like before, I could go up or I could go in. So let's say I want this at a distance of 2 mils. How's that look? Uh, that went the wrong way. So let's go negative 2 millimeters. And yeah, we could probably go more than that. Let's go 3. That looks like a good recess. So click OK. And now it's really starting to look like an actual VEX part. Now one thing here is all of our edges are nice and squared off. But that does pose some difficulties for manufacturing of plastics. So what we could do is go through this and do what's called a fillet to around all these corners. Under the modify panel, we've got a fillet tool and F is the shortcut. And I can just pick some of these hard edges and apply a fillet to it. So say I went to a fillet of one mil, you can see that that just fills it right in. I can select, I'll go OK on that. That looks pretty good. Go modify again, fill it. Grab some more of these sharp corners. Make sure you always get the right one. To the bottoms of these bosses that we made in the pocket. And we'll set this to 2 mil again. Ooh, that's a bit much. Let's go 1. So there we go. It looks nice. And if we look at the inside of the gear, you'll see that they've rounded off the corners of that quarter inch shaft. We can do the same thing. So in here again, we can go F for fillet. And fillet the inside of these. Now one mil is probably going to be a bit excessive here, so let's go 0.5 and see what that looks like. That's probably going to be good, so I click OK. And like that, you can see how our part's coming together. Now we could add some smaller fillets just to, to make it look really good. And we'll try, let's see what 0.5 mil looks like. And it's a bit much, 0.2. 
there. Nice, just a nice little soft fillet to clean it up. So there's half of my cam. So it looks good on one side, flat on the other. That's okay. So now we need to take this cam and we need to mirror it. So I've got a couple other options here. I can go to create, go down to mirror. Now in my mirror panel, right now I've got it at faces, but I can do whole bodies. And this whole cam that we've got so far is a body. I click on bodies, I can select that. Mirror plane, so I click on this. Rotate it around, select the bottom, and now it's put them together. I click OK, and there is my cam. Now, still, we still have two bodies here, so we need to do an operation to join the bodies together to make it just one. So again, we'll go to Create. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, we go to Modify, and we are going to go to Combine. Click the two bodies. If I wanted to keep one of the parts, I could click on this. But no, I just want to join the two pieces together. Click OK. And now this cam is just one single part. So there we go. We've constructed a cam. Um, now, in all fairness to Vex, I'm sure gray parts would be cool, but they t tend to use green. So if I go down to Appearance, it's going to bring up another menu that I can work with. And these are just different material libraries. So I'm looking for plastic. We're going to use opaque plastic. And not really glossy green. We probably want a flat kind of green. So plastic matte. I'll drag that over there. And now we've got our Vex green part. A few more things that we can look at on this. So say we didn't like the initial size. We can go back to our sketches and modify them. So if I come back here to my original sketch and add a dimension between these two points, which is, well, it's kind of an absurd number now, but let's say I wanted a larger cam. I could go 35. And now I've got a larger cam. So just depending the size that you want, we've got a couple possibilities there too. And that'll be it. That's how we design a part using Fusion 360 for the VEX robotic system.